Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Praise his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you again for your presence and we celebrate your goodness. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the spirit of God. We are trusting him once again to unveil, to unfold, to reveal the word of God unto our spirits. We are believing again for deposits of grace and for impartations of truth. So that when we leave from here, we'll be able to say it was good that we came. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that you've placed upon my life. And I thank you for making my tongue as the pen of a ready or a skilled writer. And I'm believing, Father God, that the word is ministered with clarity. And I'm believing that you people are receptive. And that we're not just hearers of the word, but we're doers of it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Last week, we uh, not last week, two weeks ago, um, and by the way, um, I thank God for Pastor Deborah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Glory to God. I'm glad I bullied her. She loves our children's ministry, you know. She loves it, so it's not easy to get her out of kids' church downstairs sometimes. And um, so I went to her and I said, um, you know, just thought you should know you're ministering on this day. And she gave me the look. And I gave her the look back <laughs> that says, I'm not joking. <laughs> this is, <laughs> and, I, and I left. And so I started teasing her, leave me alone. I would say, okay, praise the Lord, preacher. <laughs> Amen. But um, two weeks ago, um, we had, um, you know, Vision Sunday. And um, we, we, we spoke along the line of vision specific to Christ alive, specific to the things that, that I believe, that I have in my heart, that I believe the Lord has placed there, and um, shared some things long term as well as um, some things um, short term. And we are going to be unveiling some things, you know, in, over the next couple of months that we are going to be, um, you know, taking on as a congregation as it relates to us moving ahead in, in our pursuit of God and transformative change. Amen? Which is our theme for the year, the pursuit of God for transformative change. Spiritually speaking, that's what we're after, but we also want to see manifestations of that in the natural. Now, it is also important for you to understand that there is no vision for a church that does not involve its members. Amen? But there is no vision that does not embrace or involve your personal life as well. So a vision from God for a church also speaks to God's vision for your life in, in, in a corporate context. In other words, we all have a corporate mandate together to fulfill a divine purpose. Amen? But within that corporate mandate, there are always individual mandates. There are always things that God desires. Give me Proverbs 29, 18, please, in the King James Version. There are always things that God desires to fulfill in our lives personally. So in other words, let, let me put it this way. You know, the corporate vision of the church is explained. We know we're trying to go. Amen? But then there's also going to be an individual mandate. So within the corporate mandate, God will have assignments for you. Children's ministry. Youth ministry. Things of that nature. Amen? Evangelism team. Prayer teams and all those kind of things. Within the, within the mandate, there will be um, corporate things for you. But then you also must recognize and understand that vision encompasses a personal plan for God as well. There is no vision of God that, that does not include you on a personal level. Amen? And for you to succeed, all right, then you must know God's plan, purpose for your life. You must have a vision for your life. Now, even if that vision is birthed out of and continues to be, you know, joined to a corporate vision, that's fine. But what does God want of your life? Amen. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no what? 
Now, that's the new King James. King James. Please. Amen? Now, New King James says, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Amen? But the King James says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Amen? Now, I'm a, um, I'm a Jamaican country boy. I, I was born in, 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 in Jamaica, in rural Jamaica. And um, as much as I've lived in this country for all these years, when I, you know, when, when I, you know, when I went house shopping, I wanted land. I wanted to be able to go outside into grass. Amen? Glory to God. And not just a little piece. Oh, you know what I'm saying. I like having the animals around me, the birds and all those kind of things. I just enjoy it. It's just, you know, it's, a, it's, just, it's just a beautiful scene for me. Amen? And, and, and the, th the thing about it is this, that in, 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 in getting up in the morning sometimes and just looking as I'm coming down my, 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 the steps, I'm upstairs, and I, and I can look through the, the glass above the front door, I can look through and see the sun coming up. And there's a beautiful array of colors that is just captivating. You know, what, what I miss about my childhood was a st seeing the stars at night. You know, I, you know, remember, you know, we didn't have, we, you know, we barely had a few street lights, you know, and so forth. So we weren't lit up like a city. So as a result of that, you know, we were able to look up and, and see what the Bible was describing when God said to Abraham, step out and look up in the sky and tell me if you can count the stars. You know, there's just something beautiful about nature. Did you ever stop to realize that nature is a fulfillment of a vision that God had? And then, okay, you, you, you'll find this out, you know, is this, that as you, as you enjoyed, as I enjoyed rural Jamaica, you know, I would always drive along the riverbanks and, and, and sometimes actually go down to the riverbanks, all right? And what was the purpose of the riverbank? It was to d direct the flow of the water. Under normal circumstances, the water follows the riverbank. Okay? The water doesn't go straight on the bank's turn. No, it doesn't. Right? In, in other words, what we need to understand, vision is like riverbanks. It empowers what, the way you go in life. Okay? So the water may want to go straight. But the vision of the river says turn. You understand what I'm saying? So water turns. One of the reasons why many people, and, and I especially want the young people to pay attention to this teaching today, not that those of you who are older don't have vision, but I really want to, I really want you younger folks to pay attention. All right? There is something about the ability to say no. And there is something about the ability to, to say yes. And both of those are empowered by clarity of vision. When I know what I'm about, I can say yes or no. Amen? And the thing about it is that even if I feel bad from a human context about disappointing someone with a no, I also know it's the right thing to do. So the disappointment will not become a prison to take me off course. The only time the river breaks its banks is in a flood. And the flood is not the normal. Amen? And, and so having a purpose and a goal and know where you're going is absolutely important. When God created Adam, there was vision involved. Let us make man. And let him have dominion. Come on now. Come on. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the creeping things that creeps on the earth. Amen? He said, multiply and replenish the earth. Man had a purpose. Come on. He had a purpose. He was not just created to just sit in a garden and sing Kumbaya. Neither were you. Neither were you. 
no, now, now, we, we really need to pay attention to this. But there's another side to God's vision that many people don't see. And it's the part where, and this is where a lot of people miss it now, because they only see vision within the context of their natural lives and lose sight of another part of God's vision. What did God do every day? In the cool of every day, God came down and fellowship with the man he created. That means part of God's vision was fellowship with man. So part of my vision and yours ought to be what? Fellowship with God. See, and, and you see, for, for those who have difficulty with prayer, difficulty with Bible reading, difficulty with reading books and so forth and things like that, that teaches on the Word of God, or taking time to listen to a sermon or watching videos and stuff like that, for those of you who, who have difficulty doing that, or for those of you who say, man, I wish I had time, it's because you lack vision in that area of your life. Because if you have vision for fellowship with God, time is never a problem. Everybody's got 24 hours. And as I have to agree with the individual who said this, there's no such thing, even though we understand the context and the concept, there's no such thing as time management. Because time is 24 hours. You can't manage it. It's going to pass whether you work or you don't. But there is something about human or self-management within the concept of time. Just like I, I read recently from one of my mentors, he said that we have a misunderstanding of motive, you know, what it means to be motivated. He said, we say the people who are active and moving are motivated and the others who are sitting around doing nothing are not. He said, everybody's motivated. He said, the lazy man is motivated to do nothing. <laughs> everybody's motivated. <laughs> okay? And then he said this, to get... The lazy man that's doing nothing to begin to do something, you have to first deal with the motivation to do nothing. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I should show you this, for example. The, 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 you know, God gave manna from heaven. Would you agree? I mean, it, it dropped out the sky. But where did we ever see money drop out the sky? You got to work. But the funny thing about it, even with the manna, they still had to work. Because it didn't drop into their tents. They had to go get it. Okay? And if you are motivated to go out in the tent, you would need to get out of the tent. So we need to understand these things. That vision is rooted in all that God has for us and for our lives. So here's the thing now, whatever it is that you're desiring to achieve, whatever we're desiring to achieve as a congregation, whatever God intends for you on a personal level, okay, let me tell you clearly right now without going into detail, I'll go into that later on, all right, without going into detail, that God will reveal it. Because if God says without a vision, People perish. He won't leave you to perish. <laughs> He's going to give you a vision. What do you want? What, what, what does God want for my life? And the thing about it is that here's the problem with people. Here's the problem with people. They want to see something achieved in their lives, but they don't want to start. In, in, in other words, in, in, in other words, when I, um, when I was single, I had a vision to be married. But my vision was bigger than just getting married. My vision encompassed being happily married. Amen? M my vision encompassed being, you know, having a happy wife. Okay? M my vision en en encompassed that. And, and so what I began to do was, I paid attention to successful marriages. Lord have mercy now. 
See, I knew a lot of people my age at that time who would talk about, you know, you know, well, I don't know if I'm going to get married. And they talk about all the negative stuff. But the difference with me and them was I, I was watching the people that were succeeding at it, who were happy at it. Because if I have a vision, come on now, if I have a vision for a happy marriage, where would I look but to happy marriages? Now, it doesn't mean I can't learn from unhappy ones. Okay? But the primary place of my sight was on those who had happy marriages. And then I could see what they were doing differently from those who were unhappy in their marriages. I looked at how, especially the brothers, I looked at how they treated their wives. Amen? I looked at how they treat their wives. And, and the reason I looked at the brothers is because I'm a brother. And it would help some of you sisters to look at how happy wives treat their husbands. I observed something this, this um, week traveling. It, it stood out to me for some reason. I observe women bullying their husbands publicly. All right, the man wasn't moving fast enough yesterday to get into the, you know, to get into the, in, in, into the, into the tr train that was taking us from the car rental center, I mean, you know, you know to, the, um, to the terminal. And I mean, she, she cussed him. In, in I mean, she used some terms. You know, you know. And he just sat there quietly. Amen? And I gave him respect for that. A couple of times I noticed that. Amen? And, and, and what I find very interesting is that, you, you know, when she calmed down, that's when he spoke. And she calmed down, she spoke to him something, and just answered, like what previously didn't happen. I'm saying, I hope he's that way in private. Because they'll be fighting all the time in private. It's not that way. But the thing about it is we need to observe and learn. But no one observes and learns without a vision. No one does. Now, let me help you out again. I wanted happy children. <laughs> I heard a preacher, someone put up a clip, and I saw it this morning, interestingly where he was speaking about things he recently came to realize. And this is a highly successful, globally respected speaker. And he said he realized that he was an absentee father. And he said when he got married, he mentioned his age in his early 20s, and he said that things were challenging. And he said, what, he, said he traveled a lot, ministered a lot. He said, it's, you know, it, it, you know, they had clothes, they had, you understand what I'm saying? They had a roof over their head, you know, and all the things that they would need from that context. And, 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 and I mean, he was happy that he was providing those things. And then he said, to look back, most times he got home, he was tired, you know, he would go to sleep. By the time he woke up, they were going to school. Then he head to the office. Come on now. Sometimes by the time he got home, they were already in bed. And when he woke up again, they were already going to school and all those kind of things. And he said what he didn't realize was that they needed his person, not just his purse. And as much as his actions were good in their intention, okay, things were missing. He said he has a dull kid. He was speaking about one of his sons that struggles to call him dad. They don't have a bad relationship, okay, but the absence. And then he said, he, he said, what really hit home was he was in the pool playing with his grandchildren. And he said to himself, oh, my God, this is what I should have been doing when my children were young. Okay? The thing about it is that. Now, was his heart in the wrong place? No. He had a vision for provision. You get the point? But he did not have a vision for his presence. See, that's why you need examples in your life, people. Because it helps you to see what is necessary. See, I had a father who was there. So I wanted to be a father who was there. Does that make sense to you? 
I had a father who, when we were being sponsored to uh, come to the United States of America, who, uh, you know, and he was advised by, 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 both, by the attorney and our sponsor, you know, my uncle, that, you know, you know they, they're not likely to give all six of you the, the uh, green card at the same time. And he looked at them and said, all six are going to America together or all six are staying in Jamaica together, but there's no me going and leaving any of them behind. We all stay together in Jamaica and figure it out or we all go to America and figure it out, but we're not being separated. Amen? Now, your path might have been different, but you must understand, I was old enough to value that. You see, okay? So the thing about it is that shaped me I didn't always behave as a sinning young boy. I'm not going to stand here and lie because God knew the truth. But the thing about it is that I purposed that I was not going to ever go into one house and any child of mine go into another. Jesus have mercy. Okay? And, and, and you see, vision, folks, is... How do I say this? There is no living without it. If you don't have it, you're missing something. The, the, the Bible in the King James says without a vision, you perish. You cast off restraint, one translation says, meaning no boundaries to guide you. Do you know Every survey of young people that I've read, secular and otherwise, and even from religious organizations, when asked about, you know, their lives growing up, you'll be amazed how many adults and even teenagers are saying things like, I wish my parents had more rules to me when I was younger. Because there's something about when you grow up where you value the boundaries that were set for you. You can't go out after certain of the night. And you got to come home by this day. I mean this hour. Come on now. And if you leave the house to go to A, don't tell me you went to Z. Without first getting permission to move from A to Z. There was a price to be paid for it. Lord of mercy. And I'll give you another rule I had. Especially at my grandmother's house. All right? There are certain yards you don't go in. No matter how much you might kick the ball around with them on the field, you don't go to that yard. And I never understood all of that, so, but, but she knew stuff that was going on in that yard that I wasn't supposed to be exposed to. Hallelujah. And when you grow up where, how do I describe this now? When you grew up in an era where spanking was normal, I was never abused for you overly intellectual people. I was never abused. But it, and, I, and I was spanked a million times, but I got my fair share. But when you grew up in an era where they would say, go over there and grab me a switch. <laughs> it's, it's bad. When you know you're going to get what we call in America a whooping, you know you're going to get it. And then you have to go choose the instrument of your whooping. But, what, you know, we look back now, we laugh about it, but how many of us are the way we are because those boundaries existed? I'll give you one better. The boundaries existed beyond our house. That means I didn't get to go down the road and mis misbehave and get away with it. My grandmother, in particular, had eyes all over that little village called Luida's Vale. Everywhere. You grew up to find out that they were secret agents, spies. And you never understood how it is that it, it, without telephone. It got home before you did. You understand what I'm saying? And that, that spy network 
in my grandma's eyes was never wrong. There was no explaining once Miss So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so said they saw you doing it. You did it even if you didn't do it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, so what happens, it created what? Boundaries. And you know what is very interesting? It impacts my choices today. Now, I'm not saying I've never had to say, Lord, forgive me. That's not the point I'm saying. But the point I'm saying is I really want to drive home how important it is about vision. Amen? When there's vision in your life, when there's vision in church and so forth and so on, it eliminates frustrations. Okay? I heard somebody say this. Existence begins at birth, but life begins with vision. Existence begins at birth. But life begins with vision because that's when purpose takes over your life now. It, young people, it is what makes you stay home and study when everybody else is out partying. It is what makes you deny yourself some of the joys for something that is coming later. It is what will make you go to a good school over a party school. Vision is what makes you do research to find the best school for what you are trying to accomplish in life as opposed to just trying to go to the most popular school or the well-known school, but you're going to look for the best school for you. Without a vision, there's a risk you're going to follow the wrong crowd. My God, have mercy. Without a vision, you are going to follow and hang out with visionless people. Ooh. Without a vision, you never read anything that can change your life. Everything is play, 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 play. You know, when you, when you tell people sometimes, even young people that have a vision for being in sports or entertainment and some of those things, and you say to them, have a plan B, they automatically think you're shooting down their plan A. No. What I'm telling you is that one day you're going to be too old for plan A. And what comes after A is B. What comes next? See, the point I'm getting you to understand is a person with vision sees themselves doing more than just playing ball, for example. No matter what you may think of some of the characters that's out there, you have to, you have to admire the fact that they saw themselves as bigger than just ball. Have you ever noticed that some players never go broke? And some go broke before the year is out? They're living paycheck to paycheck, making tens of millions of dollars. Because no vision. They invest in nothing. They have 500 cars with one behind. Come on now. They have 65 children. With 65 mamas. Who all want multi-million dollar child Support. And even after they stop making that kind of money, they're still wanting that kind of money. The, the people drawing on them. It's ridiculous. But the ones with vision, they become multimillionaires on top of what they make playing. You have to have a life plan if you're talking about vision. Amen? Amen? The next thing I want to say to you is that vision, whether it's corporate or personal, has to be pursued. You have to go after it. You discover it and you go after it. And if you don't have vision, don't say you've got a life. See, I wanted a happy home. So I did things on purpose. To make sure. 
I don't break promises. My wife of over 30 years doesn't know what it is for me to break a promise. My two children, grown adults, don't know what it is for me to break a promise. Because another mentor of mine taught me never break a promise. And that mentor's name is God. Shaped my belief system when it comes to keeping my word. A man swears to his own hurt and changes not. I took time for them. Took them on great vacation trips. Blessed them. Taught them how to be generous. How to bless others cheerfully. Without strings attached. Taught them that it's not enough to give, but give good. Amen? My niece. One time. This lady that was close to her mom and so said to me, she said, you're, you and your niece are something else. I said, what do you mean? She said, she said I, I, I want to buy your niece something. I told her, I'm taking her to Payless. And she said, Uncle Dean says, set your mind above Payless. <laughs> now, I didn't mean it the way she interpreted it. But what happened is she was so used to Payless. And so I took her shopping, and all, you know, I said, oh, there's Payless. I said, no, no, no. No, but Payless has some nice stuff. So I said, baby, set your mind above Payless. Because where I was taking her was pay more. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not knocking Payless because I, I my children were Payless. I did, too. So don't miss the point. Okay? But what happens sometimes in life, we can get so stuck in a certain place where we believe this is my fit. You understand what I'm saying? And nothing better than that is for me. And I want her to understand, uh-uh, baby, uh-uh, all right? But while I was training her to set her mind about Payless, I was also training her to understand that life is not about name brand. Life's about quality. So I start, so sometimes I laugh. Because I laugh when I see people, you know, for, for example, they're dragging, they're dragging their Louis into the airport to be thrown in the belly of a plane. <laughs> if I'm going to buy Louis, it ain't going under there. Hondo <laughs> Boshanda. No! So I know, see, you understand what I'm saying? So I buy what should go under there. No, I'm serious. Amen? But, but here's the thing. There are a whole lot of things that I have that are quality that don't have any recognizable name. Because I want to be able to eat, and I can't eat, Louis. Hondo Boshanda. I don't want any tenants named Roaches. You understand what I'm saying? Because I can't do any better. All right? Don't despise their small beginnings, but you've got to have a vision for greater. Okay? So, you, so you've got to pursue it on purpose. Make choices that impact what you're trying to accomplish. Where you're trying to get to. Now, here's the other thing about vision. Vision empowers you to understand where you belong. It empowers you to understand where you belong. Come on now. Okay? So that you don't just run after what you want, because God has a plan for you. In, in other words, let's put it this way, folks. Let's put it this way. See, I just came back from Georgia, and Georgia is one I, 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 I jokingly call, you know, the state where people backslide to when they leave New York. I love New York. So anywhere you go from here, you backslide. All right? In my personal world, New York is the pinnacle. In spite of all the stupidity in our government, it's still the pinnacle place to live in my world. In whose world? Mine. Because I'm an extrovert. I don't like any towns that shut down at 6 p.m. 
You understand? If I get up at 9 o'clock, I must be able to find a restaurant. 10 o'clock, I must be able to find some place I can go eat and relax. Come on now, folks. And some places I go to, good God of mercy. The sun doesn't catch their doors open when it goes down. It, they're it gone. If you're hungry after service and you can't find a place, not even a deli to get a sandwich. I need a bodega. I need a boat. If I can't find nothing, I must be able to find a bodega. That's New York. I need real pizza when I do eat pizza. And a lot of times people move to places, you know, different places. But the one thing that people always tend to leave out in their movement plan is where they're going to worship. Where are you going to go to church? Where are your kids going to go to church? In, in, in reading about some things, because part of what the Lord told me about was, was reorganize, restructure, and so forth and so on. And just looking at some things, you know, you, you begin to realize that very people know where, few people know where they belong. And if, if New York is where I belong, if Georgia is where I belong, if Florida is where I belong, if Illinois is where I belong, if Iowa is where I belong, if Timbuktu is where I belong, know where you belong. And know that if you pursue after God's plan for your life, that you will prosper where you belong. Amen. 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 Vision will give you an agenda for your life. And we're speaking now as it relates to God's vision. God wants to open the eyes of your understanding. One preacher said vision is catching, you know, a sight of your future. I'm 60 years old. I'm happily 60 years old. Amen? And... Apart from all the things that you do because of the nature of the human body, you know, uh, you know, in looking ahead, if Jesus starts one day, I am going to depart this life. So I'm aware of that. Okay? So then you, 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 you do begin to you, you know, look at and review and, and make adjustments to your, you know, depart from this earth life existence, I should say. Amen? What's going to happen to the things you possess, you know, you know when you leave this land? Because I can't carry it with me. Amen? A man told his wife, swear to me that when I die, all my money you'll put in the casket. And she swore to him that I will put all your money in the casket. And she told, the, you know, and he made sure the pastor was very much aware of the agreement. When he was buried, the pastor came to her afterwards and said, I thought you said he was, you were going to put all the money in the casket. He said, Pastor, I kept my word. I wrote him a check. <laughs> and he's welcome to come and cash it anytime. <laughs> Everybody... Is going to leave here without the stuff. Okay? And if, if you put it all in the ground with them and somebody finds out, somebody's going to go get it. So you make plans for that. But the point is this. That's not my vision. That's just preparation for the inevitable. Vision is what I'm doing between now and then. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm 60 years old and I'm making bigger plans than when I was 30 and 40. I'm planning like I'm not going to die. Amen. So I'm exercising the body because of vision. Lord have mercy now. Amen. Amen. I want a fit body because of vision. I don't want to be sitting down someplace being taken care of when I'm 80. Neither do I want canes, wheelchairs, or anything in between. 
when I'm, you understand what I'm saying? No, I want to be a strong, fit person, ripe and ready to outrun some of you young people. Not physically. When I'm, you understand what I'm saying? I've got a vision. So it affects everything I'm doing. Okay? It, 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 how do I say it now? It, it, it governs the dictates of my life. We need vision because we didn't create ourselves. God created us for a purpose. That's why we need vision. Amen? Look at Psalm 100 and verse number 3. Psalm 100 and verse number 3. I could have given you some more scriptures, but just pick and choose a few. I guess I said something and it sounded like Syrian, so she started talking to me. Psalm 100, look at verse 3. It says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. God made us. But just as we said, Adam had a purpose. Come on now. So do we. We all have a purpose. Glory to God. Amen. We all have what? We all have a purpose. Why do we need vision? Because we need to know the way to go. Proverbs 14 and verse number 12. Proverbs 14 and verse number 12. If the verses aren't getting on the screen fast enough, it's because I told him just follow me today. It says, there's a way that seems right to man, but its end is a way of death. So just because it's right to me doesn't mean it's right for me. So I need vision from God so that I will walk the right path for my life. Come on now. Jesus told us we don't know tomorrow, so we shouldn't even worry about it. Take care of today. But he didn't say we shouldn't have a vision for it. One reason children lack purpose is because they were never taught to have it. Parents never set a standard or goals for them to chase after. But instead, they only follow what was good for them as parents. That's what the Holy Ghost was just saying to me. They only followed what was good for them as parents and not what was good for their children. There is a requirement for self-sacrifice in helping a child to become what it ought to be. And not making that sacrifice takes life from the future of a child. For you who are my children, a sacrifice was made. So that you could become what I envision and dream for you to be. And for your child to be what they ought to be, sacrifices are required. Glory to God. Now, here's something as the Spirit of God just said to me. I wasn't sure which of my batteries was the right one because they looked the same. So I came, I came prepared. Amen? Now, here is something else you, many parents don't understand. The Lord just, I don't know why he switched the parents suddenly. But I just flow with him. Is that all right with you? Does not the scripture say God will give you the desires of your heart? Amen? Now, we understand that that is tempered. By his divine will and purpose. He's not going to violate his character's word or anything like that for any desires that we may have. He's not going to steal my wife from me and give to another man because another man prays for my wife to be his wife. Do you understand? I heard about, I heard about a woman who believed the Lord had told her that Kenneth Copeland would be her husband. That Gloria Copeland, that years and years back, was going to die so she could become. So she spoke curses. Now, this is a Christian woman. She spoke curses over Gloria for Gloria to die. Gloria never died. But that's not God. So God's not going to violate his word. 
But there is, there is this concept that there are things that we go to God for that he gives us as a father because our hearts desire it. It is guided by his love and his nature, but not denied if it doesn't violate its own nature. As parents, you must understand that part of your responsibility in raising your children is also to meet at times the desires of their hearts. Yes, there are times you're going to tell them no. But why is it always no? Everything man needed, the father created. So why are you not making effort to create what your child needs? Glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right, he's done with that. Whoever that's for, run with it. Amen. Why do you need vision? Because you can't get to your future without it. Why do you need vision? Because you can't protect your life without it. There's a young lady that I admire greatly in our church in Kingston. When she started dating a particular young man, she told him, going to church, serving God, this is my life. <laughs> and when he decided to play the fool and not be showing up, not coming to church and all the kind of things, by this is my life. You know why sinners can come grab some of you females out of, out of church? Because you don't have a vision for your life. So anything that looks good, you follow. Why would you want to leave your good, Bible-believing, loving church family to go church hop with a man or a woman who don't want to settle anywhere? How many, how many of you come from a good family? Amen? No. why would you want to marry a man or a woman who wants you to be totally cut off from your good family. Now tell me now. That's more than a red flag. Amen. You're staring on the barrel of a gun. Amen. So, so the reality about it is that you need vision. Because vision is going to help you to protect your future. You will defend your future on the basis of what you know God has put in your heart. Psalm 23. And look at verse number 4, please. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 23 and verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, when, when I stick with that, I've got God having my back. I had a conversation with someone recently, and what they were sharing with me says, this is a person I love dearly. And I'm always watching their backs out. You know, if somebody said, you can't say nothing, do nothing to them, I'm going to stick up for you, I'm going to protect you. But why is it that person never does that for me? The good thing about God is that he's always going to watch your back. He's going, always going to help you. Go to Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 18. You need to recognize this stuff. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against his princes, against his priests, and against the people of the land. 
They will, verse 19, they'll fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Vision becomes your defense. When it's rooted in a relationship with God. Thank you, Jesus. And then, folks, let me tell you why you also need God's vision for your life. It's because only God's purpose stands. Lamentations 3, 37. I have an asterisk against this one in my Bible. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? That's why we need God's vision in our lives, man. Because if you, you want God backing you up, you want God directing your life, because when God speaks, it comes to pass. If you speak without God backing you up, it doesn't come to pass. That's why we have ex examples in the word that when they uttered things, God did it. It shall not rain. And it stopped raining because the Bible said, because he spoke it. And when he spoke that the rain was coming, guess what? Rain came. Amen. You need God in your life. Amen. Now, as we begin to close, allow God to determine your vision. Seek to discover what God has already determined for you. And stop in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stop being afraid of God's plan. Thinking somehow God is so wicked that he's going to give you something to do in life or to aim for in life that you're not going to like at all. Psalm 1611, it is written, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And come on now. I wouldn't trade fullness of joy and pleasures for any, uh, forevermore with anything. Amen. Why would I trade a wife that I still laugh with after 32 years? That we still act like two silly kids. We were dating that way. We go to meet each other. She come home from work sometimes while we're dating. And, you know, and, and I'd be going to meet her someplace and I'd see her coming and I'd hide and go, boo. <laughs> it, it's silly, Amen. but we enjoyed it. Amen. You know, we mock these kids sometimes, you know. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> and the reason you laugh is because you used to do it. But the funny thing about it is that it made you laugh. You enjoyed it. Amen. Why, why am I giving that up? Because I said I do. Now you can if you want to. But 32 years down the road, I've not given up them stupid, silly, foolish things that people call them. Because they make us laugh. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I heard you hear her coming down the steps, and I'm sitting there eating breakfast, and I hear her coming down the steps in the morning, and I go and I close my eyes and I go. <laughs> she told me she told you about what I said about brushing her teeth for her. <laughs> Amen. Those are things that are normal for us. Absolutely normal. not giving up that kind of joy so why, why god loves me why why would you think that his will for your life was going to is going to make you miserable and we run from it no let god drive the vision amen, amen? amen. spend time praying fasting seeking God's will for your life. Don't assume anything. And write down what God shows you. And even if you're unsure whether it's God or not, write it down and keep praying over it. Lord, give me clarity. Help me to understand this. Is this you or is it me? 
Because we need to know whether it's the voice of God or our own voice. Amen? But God will help you. Here's a biggie. You ready for this one? It's huge. Search the scriptures. What do I mean by that? When God speaks anything to you, find the root of that in the word. What does the Bible have to say about this? See, I cannot find a verse that says, Dean shall be a pastor. But I can take you back to the day when God put it in my heart and gave me scripture to support it. December 3rd, 1988. I know. Search the scriptures. Because once you have the word, you become immovable. And I don't debate with people over word semantics. One of the things that I often do when, when I'm being served in a restaurant, I will engage, you know, the person serving me, you know, with, with, you know, with questions because I want to know. I want to know if they're saved. And one young man said, well, I don't go to church. I, I'm Jehovah's Witness. I go to meeting. It's the same difference. Just different terminology. I go to meeting too. <laughs> we just call it church. You call it meeting. Amen? Because there are a lot of Christians, they said we're going to meeting in certain cultures. That's all it is. The name they gave it came out of the culture of the one who found it. That's all. Amen? But in the end, it's about knowing Jesus. I'm rooted in Scripture. That's so why you can't convince me to leave Jesus and follow you. I'm rooted in scripture. That's why you can't get me to follow the dumb preachers. Amen? You say, call the preacher dumb? Yes, the human's dumb sometimes. You say, Pastor, that's mean. That's not Christian like. You know, Paul wasn't Christian like. You know, he called some people dogs. <laughs> Beware of dogs. D O G S. So we'll get Paul converted and come back to me. Amen? Just saying to you folks, at the end of the day, when you find the scriptures that govern your choices and your decisions, you will find something to stand on. And God will be there with you. Amen? And do you remember this scripture? And it's all over the Bible, you know, where God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So whenever you walk with God and follow his plan, let me tell you, he's never going to turn aside from you. God sent me to Rhema. He funded it. Shoo. Amen. When I met my wife, before we were married, I was working. After I got engaged, I lost my job. And I still got married without owing anybody. Amen? We had the best wedding we could have on the budget we had. We had a blast. Amen? We knew how many people could come. We knew some would be disappointed. But their disappointment was not going to change my decision and put me in debt. I was not going to add people to make them happy. And when they go home happy, then after I say I do, I am not happy. <laughs> Amen? Come on now. Yeah. And that thing gave me the power and gave my wife the power to tell our parents no. Well, you know, so-and-so knew you when you were little and they would look after you. I don't know them. No. No, I don't mean that rudely. And then you could say, listen, I don't have a problem with them coming so long as you pay for them. Then if you want to pay for them, then we're fine. Then you can have them. But otherwise, no. 
Amen? And we had a blast. And you see, can I help some of you ladies out? Especially you ladies. You only have one wedding and one reception. And no matter how many 50 other things you might have afterwards, you still had only one wedding, one reception. All right? Stop looking back as, as if your reception wedding was a failure. God did not put you and your spouse together for a wedding. But for a marriage. Do you understand? I have no regrets that I didn't have the funds to do some of the things. You know, right? And, and I'll tell you something. My wonderful good friend, Pastor Shane Philpott. Amen? You know the white guy from Iowa? The one who cannot tan? That one. Amen? And don't mess with me saying that that man and me have been friends from Rhema. God put us together. I can call him anything I want to. And he'll answer. Because he'll do me worse when he gets the chance. He's been here. And you've seen how he has beaten up on me sometimes. What did he call me one time? Deanie Weenie. <laughs> and so the thing about it is this. His children, both of his biologically born children. He has um, nine kids total. Adopted seven. God bless him. Amen. Beautiful kids, all of them. And what is interesting is this. You know, first two got married. And they had these sm t small weddings. Family only. You know, one was in the church building. Another was in the backyard. Family. You know what I'm saying? That tight knit. And, and then they, took, they, 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 they planned for nice trips. In other words, and I look back and said, you shoo. I'd have a cheap wedding and a nice honeymoon. You, you get what I'm saying? You know, the thing about it, because it's not a wedding. It's a marriage. And the reason many people's marriage is miserable because all they prepared for was a wedding. And that's why some of them didn't pay attention to red flags. Because all they wanted was a wedding. So that people could brag about. That bring them no gifts. You'll be amazed at how many decisions become easy in your life when vision is alive and well. I hope I helped somebody. Stand up with me. Vision is extremely empowering. Glory to God. Multimedia turned out that it was better I didn't give you a list because I skipped so many scriptures. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? Vision is so empowering. Hold your neighbor by the hand, please. As a church, it is God plan, God's plan that we're walking together Side by side, hand in hand, so to speak, shoulder to shoulder, to fulfill what God has ordained. You can release them. If you're by your spouse, hold your hand. And if you're not, just imagine holding their hands. It is God's will. That you are walking together. Hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder. To fulfill a divine purpose. And don't let that word divine throw you. Because divine doesn't necessarily mean it is religious. It just means it's God ordained. Amen. You can release your spouse. Put your hand on your chest. And the reason I put your hand on your chest is because it's symbolizing an agreement with the God who is in you and on you. And it is His will that on an individual basis you are walking hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder with God to fulfill a divine purpose.
That's his plan. That's his plan. That's his plan. Father, with our hands and our hearts, and with genuineness in our hearts, we submit ourselves to your plan and purpose, to your vision for our lives. Whatever that may be, whether it is understood by me now, what is understood by us now, or whether it is yet to be revealed, we commit to do your plan, to follow your vision for our lives. For we know that what you have purposed and desired is far better for us than anything we could ever imagine. In the name of Jesus, I commit to following. We commit to following your plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hands and thank God today. There's a song we used to sing in church when I was younger. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. Mold me and make me. After your will. After while I'm waiting, while I am waiting, yielded, yielded and, and still. still. Look at that. While I'm what? Waiting, yielded and still. So in other words, even while I'm waiting for you to show me, I am yielded. Meaning I've already decided I am going to do it. So all I'm waiting on now is for you to show it to me. Hakure basuku. Nembros talavate. Could you get me the oil? Nashke televando sotea. Nembros tolovore gende. Nembra papasutu. She preste levai. Master Kuta. Just put a little on my fingertip, please. Thank you. Ala Shekuria Satelevea Nangasa. You can step this because I'm right down here. Shepa Saku, turn to me. I'm going. Oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the agent that God uses in the earth to fulfill His will. He is God. So when oil is placed upon you, it's symbolizing the hand of God or God coming upon you for good. And this good makes you whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, embrace her. Embrace her with your presence and drive everything away that is not of you. Perfectly whole in the name of Jesus. Nothing missing, nothing broken, as I heard one person once say. I declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Katosoria Shanama Sakuri Kitele Ma Shanamanga Sakutu Sheleveles Leprosto Shanama Sakute Father we bless you We thank you We glorify your name Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kore anda sapata. Shapatoria. Shanemende. Shanamasakuto. Shepasakuria. Nenga sakata la basha. Lip of the hands. Nasakite le brosta la basha kia. Nom brosto kote le vele mestikite. Ha. Nesoria Pashkito Satia. There is a perfect path. A path beyond your understanding. A path that may be very different from anything that you've ever seen. But yet it is called the perfect path. It will be shown you, said the Spirit of Grace. And with faith and with joy. Even though there may not be full understanding, walk in it, and it shall more than satisfy the desires of your heart. Peace, joy, and to some degree, acceptance shall result. For there will be those who will not understand and there'll be those that will not agree. But at the same time, there will still be peace. There will still be joy. And yes, there will be some degree of acceptance. Walk in it, said the Spirit of Grace. Thank you, Father. There is something you should remember. And it is that my love is a perfect love. And because it is perfect, it is not based on your past. It is not based upon any mistake, wrong choices. Because to me, none of those things exist. Because my perfect love covers and wipes away everything past. And then lays out a path into all that is greater than anything your heart can ever desire. So embrace my word which says I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Embrace that word no matter what is said from the north, south, east and west that is different from it. Because my eyes are on that word for you. And that which is to come is greater than what you have already seen. Ha ha ha. bosete. Because I've set my perfect love upon you. Hallelujah. Ha kore de shikia. Nambo sokori andelevele. Nembandusu shatelere reposta vite nengandosh ketele preste nemaya na prasta kuri gendelevele me shem prasta dato tore gete nende lala shanavando lolo boko suria ne prasta kashkite nevato kanda so shele repepe suria andalamai shene menge sekutia hallelujah lift your hands and worship the Lord for a minute please. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 God is so wonderfully good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Wait for me over there, please. Thank you, Jesus. Neshka hasuria shegitele brosto nangush tetikia nongore andalabasa. The Lord has not overlooked your faithfulness. <laughs> and the rewards of that faithfulness shall begin to be manifested. Soon you shall see things your heart has desired, ha, huh, that you have waited on. And it shall be a reason to praise. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. May I have, I'm Pastor Barrington, may I have some oil, please? Thank you, Jesus. Namba Sakotia Shatalaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I anoint him to be strong. I anoint him for levels of leadership. Starting at home and manifesting in other areas. Bakusuta Shebele Remboso Shanavande. I anoint his hands to prosper. Hale Mando Sheki and rise beyond where he is right now. Hale Boshketia. I anoint him to be bold. Nango Sekie Shepale Presto Nomonda. Shadevia, Nangele Brestotoria, Nande Sekite. And Lord, I cast down every hindrance. Every hindrance. Move in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hapasuria. Nambashte Kuri and Lobolia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. This is weird, but just let it flow. Bring me one of those drumsticks that's in there that he played with. Drumstick. There's no drumstick in there. Is there any drumstick in there anywhere? It's it's it symbolizes or represents something. That's a drumstick. Doesn't matter. I just grab both so you can put them both back together. Stretch your hand up here. And you critics, criticize. Father, he's not physically present. So I take this which represents the instrument that he plays. I release an anointing 
and an awakening upon his life. I release a favor that man cannot withstand. Kito sapile mandai. I release upon him fresh vision for personal and spiritual growth in the name of Jesus. So that this gift that you have given him may rise up for your glory. May rise up for your glory. May rise up for your glory. And I declare that as a result he prospers and walks in victory in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify you Lord Jesus. Thank you Father. Nembo sakia Nambasta kele presto lo Thank you Jesus Praise be to God Thank you Lord Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Yes, Lord. I call it the beginning of great things for her. Yeah, Father. I don't know if she knows you. But I still remember the smile. I still remember her jumping for joy. At that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know her story. But I call it changed in the name of Jesus. Not just for her sake, but for the sake of her child. And she shall know that it's your hand and she will serve you. And that child shall prosper and be great. And eternity will tell her testimony. Satan, your plan is broken. She will no longer beg. Ha, ha, ha. She will no longer beg. No, 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 no. Like the wind of God, your favor blows into her life and it stays and it produces and it causes testimony. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Is there anyone here you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior? You say, Pastor Dean, I need Jesus in my life. You're watching online, you need Jesus in your life. Thank you, Lord. If that's you and you say, that's me, Pastor. I need Christ in my life. Raise one hand, I'll pray with you. Anywhere in this room? Raise one hand and I'll pray with you. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching online, on the screen will be a number and an email address. And you can call that number. You can email us. Use the subject salvation. Because we want to help you in your relationship with God. But if you're watching us, you say, Pastor, I need Christ in my life. Then pray this prayer with me. If you're already, you know, you know, if you're planning to go up and make the phone call, pray this prayer with me, then make the phone call. Pray this prayer with me, then send the email. Say this, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me and sending Jesus to die on the cross of my sins. With all of my heart, I repent, meaning I turn now to walk your way. 
And with my mouth, I declare, Jesus, I make you now and receive you now as the Lord of my life. I believe that you are God's son and I accept you as my savior. I commit that from this day forward, with all of my heart, I will serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, you can call the number 718-994-0514 or you can email us, christalifebx at gmail.com. We want to get you some free material. We want to minister to you. We want you to find a good Bible-believing church with a wonderful pastor and wonderful people. Amen? Because I'm, I'm glad that you're able to join us online and I thank God for the tool that allows us to reach you wherever you are. But there's nothing better than being a part of a vibrant body of believers in a local church with a good pastor with whom you can fellowship, where you can be discipled to grow in Christ, and they can help you to become all that God has for your life. Amen? Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. God is good. Amen? And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who's supposed to do the benediction? Come and do it for me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you, Lord God, for the enlightenment that has come as a result of your word, O oh God. Father, I pray that that word will find root in our lives and will be grounded, that it would bring forth fruits, multiple fold, 30, 60, or 100 fold. I pray, O oh God, that today is a turning point in our lives as a result of that which we have heard. That we would look back and reflect and say, this was when that word got sown, this was where that seed got sown, that made us change the way we thought and give us a, a renewed vision for our lives, for our children. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for the man of God that has spoken. Thank you. We pray that you will anoint him afresh, that you will replenish, O oh God, from the stores from which that came. We pray, Father, Lord God, that we will see the fruits, O oh God, of his labor in our lives, O oh God, through the working of your spirit in Jesus' name. Father, we are excited, O oh God, about the fruits that come out of the word that we have received today because that word brings light and it brings understanding unto the simple in Jesus name amen let us pray father we thank you even as we leave that we leave in your presence I declare that the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord causes his face to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus name amen God bless you. Before you go, Pastor Samorin celebrated a birthday this week. <laughs> Amen. And it wouldn't be right for us to leave out of here without singing happy birthday. Amen. And if you want to shake his hand and leave a blessing, that'll be good too. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Barrington, go ahead. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, as is a morning. Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. Hey, happy birthday, sir. Praise God. God bless you all. Praise God.